Hey y'all, it is episode 287 of the Late Night Vision Show. I am Hans, one of your co-hosts here for the only show, maybe the best show, <laughs> for all you night hunters, night hunters, hogs, coyotes, whatever you're doing. If you just like to, if you just think night vision and thermal is just cool, you don't even hunt with it, welcome. I mean, it is cool. And we are lucky that we get to play with this stuff. And speaking of playing with this stuff, it's very important to make sure that when you are choosing a brand new night vision or thermal optic that you are doing so with all the information that you can get this stuff, making these decisions isn't easy. There's a lot of equipment out on the market, uh, a lot of new technology. Uh, there's some older technology stuff on the market as well. If you search the internet for any of this stuff, you're going to find stuff that probably isn't even being made anymore. <laughs> so to do so, Make sure you call and talk to people uh, that use this stuff on a daily basis. And that's us, me, Jason, Ashley. We use this stuff. We test with this stuff. We hunt with it. And we take your phone calls all day, every day to explain and help you understand uh, the advantages and disadvantages of all of these, all this technology and if it's going to work for you. So you can find us, OutdoorLegacyGear.com, 877-350-1818. We'd love to earn your business. Uh, we'd love to take your phone call and we want to help you put into this, put you into this, any optic, whether you're hunting with it or whatever you're doing. Anyway, Jason, I left you out for a long time That's to okay. get that commercial That's out of the okay. way, but my co-host break, I can yeah, always be put on hold for a commercial. My co-host for since day one, and uh, we are now on episode 287. So that's 287 straight weeks. The owner of Outdoor Legacy, Jason Robertson. Uh, good evening. How you doing? Good evening. I am doing good. good. I can say this. It is, uh, um, I've got my hoodie on, my Outdoor Me Legacy too. hoodie. Yeah. This is one of those things where uh, a couple days ago, it was 87 degrees. Yeah. And in 24 hours, uh, we dropped, I think, in, I think, in, I think we went from uh, 87 and within mm -hmm. 48 hours or less, we were going to be at 27. And so, yeah, welcome to east texas oh. to the the south down here where uh we go from from summer to winter overnight and we'll be back at summer i'm sure before thanksgiving <laughs> so, so all yeah. the all the deer hunters right now down here in texas right. so rifle season starts this weekend so this is the end mm -hmm. the last week and last couple of days of october right now or we're moving into yeah. Uh, moving into november this weekend y'all is this the rifle season for deer hunting and everybody's kind of thinking that all this uh, cold weather just pushed through because that's going to get everything stirred up. Right. Hopefully. So maybe some of those big bucks will show up anyway. So this week we're going to be talking about, uh, we've going back to a show topic that we've done. That's been very successful for us, but we're going to do something quite different this time. Uh, this is the uh, coyote hunting season, night vision and thermal combo show y'all and we put ourselves on a very strict budget our wives said you can only spend three thousand dollars and good luck getting whatever you can get to fully outfit <laughs> yourself for the season at three thousand dollar budget there's a lot of you out there that are like i would love to have a three thousand dollar budget it sounds like a ton of money uh but if you watched any of the other shows when we talked about thermal combos and for coyote and uh, hog hunting we were talking about five thousand dollar budget and you know some of those were basic entry level, uh, optics that, you know, just, you know, are, are just in the thermal market. But this week, y'all, we've set ourselves on a tight budget. Times are tough. $3,000, Jason. And we've got to at $3,000, you know, and we'll talk about why two optics are better than one, but at $3,000 night vision is now in the conversation. So I think that that's a, I think that's a good thing though. <clears throat> yeah. And so that's what I was going to say here real quick is that uh, I want to be clear if you're watching this and you've never got into, you know, night hunting and you're wanting to do it, you're like, well, I don't have $3,000. I guess this isn't for me. The way y'all are talking about it. No, this is a combination of two optics, a handheld and a dedicated rifle scope. So this is for the guy who maybe has a little more money. I mean, the 3000 to spend, there's a lot of guys getting into this saying, well, I got four or 500 bucks. What can I do? Well, there's some scopes on this list for you in here and you just don't have to pick up the, the thermal handheld that we're going to be talking about. So mm -hmm. uh, it's still a, uh, still a show that may have some interest for you. And we're definitely not saying that you have to spend $3,000. What we're saying though, is that with $3,000, which is a more reasonable budget than 5,000, you can get two. You can get two mm -hmm. optics uh, for, uh, I hate to say the price of one, but that's true because a lot of the, the thermal scopes on our, our uh, $5,000, you know, shows were 
$3,000 and above. So you can get uh, two optics here for the price of one. Mm -hmm. Definitely two optics. And, and the reason why we talk about two optics being better than one, nobody wants to scan with their scope on the rifle side to side. It's just it, very, very difficult to do. Um, there are reasons why uh, advantage that you can have an advantage with a night vision scope over a thermal. And that's something we'll talk mm -hmm. about as well, but stay tuned. We're going to be talking now. We're going to go through, if you have a $3,000 budget, combining a night vision uh, mono or night vision scope with a thermal monocular, which makes most practical sense, Jason, you know, being able to right. scan with a thermal optic. So let's back up, a, back up just a little bit. The advantage of thermal is always going to be detecting an animal, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you're looking out there, you're going to see an animal quicker, sooner with a thermal optic than you will with a night vision scope. But what's the advantage of having a night, night vision scope? It's always the ID, being able to mm -hmm. know exactly what it is you're looking at. Because with a night vision scope, you know, it is, you're using an IR light to illuminate the screen and you're able to see uh, not necessarily colors, but different shadings of colors of grays and blacks. And you can actually see the animal in its true form other than just the, uh, with a thermal, you're just looking at a heat signature. So you're either seeing, you know, all black or all white or whatever color palette you have it on with thermal, but with night vision, you can see that, Hey, that's a coyote. You know, it's a coyote. If you've seen the videos online, you know that the IDing with the night vision scope is, is so much better than it is with a, with a thermal scope. So that's why the combination seems more natural when you're talking about getting two optics at three thousand dollars. Well, why would you choose? Why would you? Why wouldn't you choose a thermal scope and a night vision monocular? <laughs> you know, and there's not a lot of those to choose. But with a thermal scope, again, your your advantage with detection uh, is not going to be helped by having a night vision monocular. If all that makes sense, no. anyway. That, yeah, you do not want a night vision monocular uh, for. Quick idea, or quick, I'm sorry, quick idea, quick scanning, looking out there long distances and seeing that there's something out there. That's the beauty of thermal mm -hmm. is boom, there's something out there. Nothing can sneak by you. Nothing can hide from you. And that's where, you know, Hans is right. That's where you want that thermal handheld. All right. So stay tuned. We're going to read through this list. I'm going to start out with the monoculars. Uh, and this, again, goes towards our $3,000 budget. So the list of monoculars are ones that if you're interested in in getting into night vision and thermal and you have a set budget around 3000 this list of monoculars are one that's going to be able to fit within your budget and also include a night vision scope stay tuned at the end we'll discuss a little bit again the advantages of uh, of why um, you know we made these choices with these the the thermal scopes and the night vision monoculars we'll discuss that at the end a little bit but so going into monoculars, um, we're going to start out with the AGM brand. So oh, everybody's hold on, been... Hans, real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but tell them what, you know, we left some, some optics off this list. There's some other monoculars that fit into this price category, but, but our, our magnifications and that sort mm -hmm. of thing, or yeah. we kind of came into. So with keeping with scanning for coyotes, it really with hog, what we prefer, and, and again, these are our choices. Somebody's list might right. be completely different, but what we prefer uh, is to have at least a two power base magnification thermal scanner. And, and that w the reason being is because two power uh, gives you a wide enough field of view that scanning side to side, you know, still covers a, uh, gives you a full field of view. You can uh, have a good, nice, wide picture picking up coyotes uh, on the side of you, running in, whatever it may be. But two power also gives you enough magnification that you can. Um, scan out there and see that there's a coyote and you'll know pretty well that it's a coyote out to 200, maybe 300 yards. That's kind of pushing it, but two to 300 mm -hmm. yards um, possible ID range. And again, not a hundred percent ID, but m mostly that you'll have a 80 to 90% uh, percentage that, that it is a coyote you're looking at at two to 300 yards. So we chose our optics based on a minimum of two power base magnification. Uh, and also we had to stick within a price range and because of the prices of the night vision scopes that we're going to go over, our prices range anywhere from, uh, just under looks like $1,200 all the way up to $2,500. So roughly around there. Uh, uh -huh. so we had to stick within that range to combo with the night vision scope. And, and Jason can tell you the, the ranges of that, uh, yeah. when we get to it. But 
So keeping that in mind, at least two power base magnification and uh, at, you know, the 12 to 25, we couldn't go higher than $2,500. So that was the, the main price stipulation that we did stick to. But we have the AGM Taipan uh, TM19-384. The price on that's $1,395. That's basically a two power, 1.9X to 15.2 base magnification. I'm sorry, 15.2 high-end magnification, 1.9 base magnification. Uh, you got the AGM Taipan TM25-384. Price on that's $1,595, just under $1,600. And that is a 2.5 to 20 power. So these two Taipan models, there's some other uh, Taipan, well, there's several other Taipan models that did make the list because they were lower resolution or lower or different magnifications. Um, these have been around for a long time and, and really... Uh, it the, what people like about it obviously it has rechargeable batteries on these two models they are focusable they're a a decent quality monocular for a very good price these are the taipans are some of the more lower priced monoculars on the market but they're still good quality and they still can be very very effective there's probably more taipans floating around the united states than maybe any other monocular on the market right now there's been so many of them sold and they've been out for for several a uh, couple years now it seems like uh, but they very good, very good priced. Uh, and also the fact that they come with the, you know, the 384 resolution and 640 resolution monoculars, all of those come with a, a five-year warranty. So that's a, a very good value. Um, a couple newer models on the market for AGM are the Sidewinders. Very popular, um, somewhat new. We've done videos on them, but very, very popular in just a short amount of time. The AGM Sidewinder TM25-384 the price on that's $1,995. That starts at two power and goes to 16 power. Then you have the AGM Sidewinder TM35-384. That one's $2,195, and that starts at three power and goes to 24 power. These are what we love about these. They run on a rechargeable, removable 18650 battery. They both come with a five-year warranty. Great picture image. You got a two power option, two pa two power base magnification option, and a three power base magnification option for all you longer range hunters and people that need to scan at longer range. But uh, the fact that they have their battery system uh, it should be the envy of every other company out there. I, I would say with that removable eighteen six fifty battery. Moving on from AGM, we're going to move into the Pulsar line. We've got. Uh, we got several of their Axion models to talk about. The first one is the Pulsar Axion 2 XM30F, uh, which has been uh, price dropped. It's $1,199, just under $1,200. Three power base magnification up to 14X. Uh, you've got the Pulsar Axion 2 XQ35 Pro, uh, which the price, the new price on that's $1,499. That starts at two power and goes to eight power. You got the Pulsar Axion 2 XQ35 Pro LRF. That's with the laser rangefinder for $19.99. That's a two to eight uh, power magnification. And then the last one, we get our really our one, look at the list here, Jason, our one and only 640 mm -hmm. resolution monocular yep. on the list. This is the Pulsar Axion 2 XG35. The price on it's $24.99, starts at two and a half power goes up to 20 power. Now the Pulsar Axions, the, that form factor has been around for many years. Uh, they continue to up, uh, improve it with different sensors. Uh, they've changed ma they've changed magnifications around quite a bit on these. Uh, but these, uh, you know, the XQ models are, are very good quality. And now with the new price of a, a very good value, you know, they are uh, now in, comp you know, direct competition with some of the, um, the HEM Taipan models, which have been popular, as you know, but the Axions, very small, compact, fit in your pocket, rechargeable batteries, you know, all the color palettes, all the the regular functions, picture in picture display, all the regular functions that you're used to with your Pulsar scope if you have one. Uh, a lot of that is is on these monoculars. And I think the biggest selling point is for people that want something small and compact. Uh, so moving on from Pulsar. We go into the iRay, iRay Cabin CBL 19. That's what referred to as what we talk about as the Cabin 19. Uh, the price on that's $1,799. Starts at two power, goes to eight power. And then you have its big brother, the Cabin 25. That's the iRay Cabin CBL 25. The price on that's $2,099. So just under $2,100. 
Uh, that magnification starts at two and a half power. It goes up to 10 power for all of you people that need to scan and see a little bit an idea at a little bit further range. Uh, again, a very small, uh, smaller, more compact frame uh, form factor, fit in a pocket, fit in a coat pocket. Uh, these do come with a five-year warranty, which is a, is a very, very good deal. It is the, Jason, the only monoculars on the list that have a built-in LED flashlight. So right. if, you, cool. if you want to not have to carry a flashlight anymore and you want it on your monocular, there's a, then you have your match. It's a match made in heaven. Uh, but that is our list. So these, again, we've got 10 monoculars on the list and we kept it a minimum of ba two power base magnification and we kept it at a maximum of $2,500 uh, price to be able to match up with our night vision scopes but that was our criteria that's why we have 10 optics on the list but again uh it's important when you're deciding on these yes we're giving you the framework we're giving you the ones to look at what you need to do with this information uh go research we've put up a lot of screenshots of the outdoor legacy gear uh website where you just kind of kind of see what it looks like but get in there see what you like about these different things. You're like, oh, I like the size of the Axion, but I like the battery setup of the Sidewinder. And that way you can start to narrow down on your own. And then from there, if you got it narrowed down to two or three options, definitely call us. And then we can help you narrow it down even further. But this is kind of just, Jason, this is just kind of the framework. And same with the night vision scopes that you're going to go over right now. Yep. So uh, one thing I know somebody's probably going to ask is they're going to say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, there are some thermal monoculars out there um, that are you know, less expensive. They're a 256 resolution. Uh, why are those not on your list? Um, we sell a few of those units. Um, be honest with you guys. Uh, they're for an extremely, extremely tight budget. We don't think that they would work for coyote hunters. Uh, we think they're more for guys that are just looking for something in their backyard, see what the dogs mm -hmm. barking at, that right. kind of thing. Uh, you know, a little more hobbyist campers, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. We don't think they have a lot of use in hunting situations, especially at least these type of hunting situations. So uh, there's going to be guys ask why those aren't on there. And that's why we think you need to be into a, uh, a focusable 384 uh, optic really to, to get a and, lot of good use out of it. And the same could be said for, uh, thermals, you know, if people talking about thermal scopes and stuff, the same reason why we don't recommend a 256 thermal scope, uh, is, That's right. is for the same exact reason. Same reason. Yeah. We just say, save your money. I mean, buy one of these digital night vision optics right here. And, uh, we think you'd be far better served. So let's talk about those real quick. So what is our list going to include here? Well, number one, there's not that many digital night vision optics out there. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot. There's more than there's ever been, but not as many as thermal optics. And so our requirement was going to be that the unit needed to be at least a two and a half power base magnification. And uh, I know if you watched our uh, thermal you know, show on this, we said for cow hunters, you need a three power base mag. And Hans and I actually had a, a discussion for a little while uh, when the show started or we're trying to get these show notes going, do we even include two powers on this? Which we would never do. I shouldn't say never. There's some exceptions. We would not generally do for a coyote a hunting list with thermal. So why would we even consider a two and a half or even discuss a two power? And the reason is, is because these digital night vision optics at their lowest resolution on this list have much higher resolution than a thermal optic does. So what that means is it allows you to use your zoom more than you do in a thermal scope. All right. So you start with more pixels. You know, every time you zoom up with any of these digital scopes, digital night vision, thermal, every time you double your base magnification, you cut your resolution in half. Another way of saying that is every time you zoom up, you cut your image quality in half. Right. But we're starting at a much higher resolution. So we decided to make a compromise and we're going to go down to two and a half power. That lets us bring in one more scope on this mar uh, on this list that's on the market we really like. And I want to say this. We didn't do this just to bring in this scope. Uh, we really did have this discussion of should we include mm -hmm. two power? Well, maybe not. But I would still say there's some times, depending on how you hunt, you might be a coyote hunter 
that really could use the two power. You might be doing a combination of, of hunting where that would work for you. That's something we'd be glad to talk to you about on the phone, figure out what's best. When it comes to choosing these optics, any of these, you want to make sure you're getting the right one. The biggest mistake you can make, whether it's the, the scope or whether it's the handheld, is just listening to our show saying, well, they said this one's good and they said this one's good and going out and buying it and going, see, they said it was good. Well, but it might not be good for you. It may not be good for your situation. Uh, so you need to know you're getting the exact right one. Had a guy who listened to one of our digital night vision shows um, on YouTube a few weeks ago. It was an older show that we'd put out. And the guy watched it and he left a comment and he said, I just purchased another model, mm. uh, you know, three weeks ago. He said, I didn't do the research. I just watched this show. He goes, oh my gosh, I should have called y'all. I should have bought this optic. Would have cost me a hundred bucks more. And he said, I can already tell it would have served me way, way mm -hmm. better. He's like, now I'm stuck. <laughs> so it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know, but yeah. you know, again, give us a call. We're willing to help and, and absolutely lead you in the right direction and help you, you know, get set up with what you need. All right. So here we go. All right. Why are these listed? I've already told you that, you know, it's the two and a half is going to be our base mag. And basically we don't have a stipulation on the price because uh, they start at about $500 and they go up to uh, about $1,400. And that's about as expensive as digital night vision optics are right now mm -hmm. on the market, uh, at least anything that we're recommending. Uh, one last caveat, there's guys watching this are going to go, wait a minute, you didn't choose XYZ brand or you didn't put, why? This is what we recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you might have your own list. These are our recommendations. Right. And we have used a lot of other uh, digital night vision optics on the market. There's some stuff that's, you know, brand new on the market. We've used them and we're not putting them on the list because they're not our favorite. So mm -hmm. here we go. Sightmark Wraith HD. Uh, this baby has been around a while. Okay. This is a workhorse. This optic uh, really revolutionized the market when it came out because it was a full color daytime black and white at night and the price was right uh, and this unit is $499 it is a four power base mag it goes up to 32 uh, uh, goes up to 32 digital zoom and it is a 1920 by 1080 resolution so again just think about that right there we've been talking about these thermal scopes that are 384 by 288 or mm -hmm. oh they're high resolution they're 640 by 480 this is a 1920. Mm -hmm. It is the lowest resolution of anything on this list, 1920 by 1080. So the Wraith HD, again, this is a four power. Really like this scope. Um, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say this so I can get this out of the way. Every one of these scopes is full color daytime. Right. And you can click a button or change a setting and, and make it, put it in a night vision mode. Okay. So then it will be black and white at night. Every one of these units um, will need an IR illuminator. That is an infrared light. It looks like a flashlight, but you and I and the animals can't see it when it's on, but the scope can. Mm -hmm. Same thing that your, your deer camera in the woods uses. It's the exact same principle, uh, except it's just a really bright flashlight. Um, they will all come with some sort of IR. Uh, every single one of these, I'll just go ahead and tell you, if you're going to use them coyote hunting, we're going to advise that you upgrade the IR illuminator, something like one of the sniper hog lights that we sell. Again, I'm not going to get into those. Uh, feel free to give us a call. We'll get you hooked up with exactly the combo that you need that works mm -hmm. best with your scope and the distance that you're, you're hunting. So again, all full color uh, during the day, black and white at night. So the Wraith HD, uh, one thing a lot of people like about this is that it uses four double A batteries. Everybody's got double A batteries. So they're they're laying around, they're easy. That's something that appeals to a lot of people. So really like that. Now, moving up, you've got the Sightmark Wraith 4K Max. I'm gonna go ahead and give it away and just tell y'all, this is probably my favorite Sightmark Wraith. And there's five different Wraiths, but this is, I mean, I love this scope. It is $699 and it is a three power base magnification, goes up to 24 uh, power, opt, um, sorry, digital zoom. 
And resolution, a whopping 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. So if you're looking for something that you want to be able to zoom up with, uh, this is it, guys, because you've got a ton of resolution there. The battery on this is an internal rechargeable battery. So it's inside the scope. You can't take it out. You plug it in the wall to charge it up. If that concerns you, I know that some of these um, uh, thermal handhelds that Hans mentioned had batteries like that. But if that concerns you, any little normal USB battery pack that you charge your cell phone with, that you keep in your you know backpack or your hunting bag, they will run these scopes all night long. Every single one of them, same thing with the monoculars. Uh, you get a good little battery pack, plug it in, and you're good to go. So really like the 4K Max. Again, that's a $699 price point. Moving on to new this year is the AGM Neath. Extremely popular. We mm -hmm. really like this optic. It is $799. It's a two and a half power, goes up to 20 power digitally. It is a 1920 by 1080 thermal resolution. And this is the cool part. It uses a fully removable 18650 rechargeable battery. Comes with a couple of them in the box and we absolutely love the fact that it's a, you know, rechargeable, good battery life on it. We are a big 18650 fan like this a lot. I'm going to come back in just a minute. I'm going to talk about just generally generally about some of the the image qualities on these uh, kind of compared to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so next moving on, we've got the site oh, 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 hold on. Need to mention this. The Neath this is a big deal. For $7.99, also includes an American Defense Manufacturing Quick Detach Mount. Mm -hmm. That comes with the scope. I mean, that's a couple hundred dollar mount that you're getting with it. So that's a big plus with that unit. Okay. All right. Sightmark Wraith 4K Mini for $7.99. And it is a four power base mag. Goes up to 32 digital. It is a 3,840 by 2160 resolution. Uh, that's considered 4K. Okay, we're, we're uh, 160 pixels from 4,000, so that's considered a 4K. It takes two fully removable CR123A batteries. Those are just dis disposable batteries, and... Uh, you know, so so it's a very, very small unit. That's one of the reasons it uses these two small batteries. Uh, I wish I had one. I had one down in my office. I should have brought it up here. This unit is tiny, okay? I mean, it is a little bitty unit. Uh, some guys really like that. Some guys are like, oh my gosh, it doesn't even look like a scope. It looks like a red dot. Uh, it, and it is. It is a really, really small unit. I'm showing it right uh, now, again, Jason. I got one. Oh, you got it? Okay, yeah. perfect. There you go. Perfect. All right, moving on got the Pulsar Digex C50. This unit is $1,399, $1,399. It's a three and a half power base mag, goes up to 14 power digitally. It's a 1928 by 1028 resolution. And uh, it is, uh, it has, now this is a, you know, a little bit of a different thing here than anything we've got. It's got a combination of internal rechargeable that you can't take out batteries mm -hmm. and removable batteries. So it's got both. So uh, this unit, if you've ever seen any of the, you know, high end Pulsar Thermion uh, thermal rifle scopes, this is in the exact same form factor. I mean, mm -hmm. you could lay it on a desk and, you know, nobody would probably be able to tell the difference than if they didn't know exactly what it was. It's in that same body style. So it has the same internal <clears throat> non removable rechargeable battery and Right on the top of it, um, what looks like a scope turret, you pull that, it's a battery cap door, you pull the little thing off and you drop a, you know, proprietary Pulsar battery in there, which it comes with. Um, so, that unit, mm -hmm. like a whole, whole lot. I'm going to say a couple quick things. Now, I know there's guys that listen to this and they go, all right, we're cool at $4.99. I was even listening at $6.99 and $7.99. And then all of a sudden, you made this giant <sighs> jump up to $13.99. And I thought that thing was going to be like 8K resolution. But then come to find out, it's really what we would probably call 2K. So why would anybody ever buy that? So I'm going to say this in, in uh, I'm say defense of the C50 because it, it needs an explanation. Mm. The reason, there's a lot of reasons. There's number one, the C50 is the most 
light sensitive or low light capable optic uh, that I'm aware of on the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to use an optic and say, let's use this somewhat deer hunting. Maybe you're deer hunting with one of these in the daylight because it's full color. And, you know, everybody, a lot of guys are doing that now. But you can't obviously turn on night vision and shoot at night and kill a deer. We get that. But you want to get that first and last 15 minutes. And that's mm-hmm. what a good quality daytime scope does for you. That's the difference in a, you know, maybe a $100 scope and a $1,000 scope is the first and the last 15 minutes. Well, that's what this scope does. It has the ability to bring in so much ambient light, even when there's so little there, that it allows you to, in full color, still use this Mm -hmm. in that first and last 15 minutes of light. It Mm -hmm. is phenomenal. So if you're buying this to hunt in the the daytime, that's a big benefit. Um, You know, it's also a benefit if you want to go out there at nighttime, or I'll say nighttime, you know, dusk and dawn, and you're shooting coyotes or whatever, and you don't want to turn on an IR for whatever reason, you can still do that with this unit. That's number one. So another big thing is, I already told you, this is in the same housing Mm -hmm. as the Pulsar thermal, um, you know, thermions, the thermal scopes. They have optics that are $8,000 that are in the exact same housing, same batteries, same features, same buttons, same functions. So guys, Pulsar, who's one of the premier European thermal manufacturers in the world, they're not going to put an $8,000 thermal in a cheap housing. You're getting that housing in a $1,300, $1,400 scope. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Again, same features, all the video recording, all the streaming, the Wi-Fi, all that stuff is exactly the same. So I know this turned into a mini commercial for the C50, but I think it's required (laughs) because a lot of people are just immediately crossed off the list and say, well, why in the world would I buy that unit with when it's that expensive and I can get, you know, the same resolution for $500? Well, there's a little more to it. Mm -hmm. And it also doesn't mean that the image quality is that much less because it's it's 2K versus 4K. That's something that is very strange, something we've experienced across these optics. Uh, taking, for instance, the AGM Neath and putting it next to uh, one of the, the Sightmark Wraith 4Ks, it's unbelievable mm-hmm. how with half the resolution, it holds its own. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of that can be done with, software. A lot of that can be done with other components, whether it's the lenses, whether it's the quality of the digital night vision sensor. So there's just things you, this is why you cannot judge these based simply on reading the specifications. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. You could try and you could, you know, you could think you're right and it, you know, maybe get lucky, but it really takes using each of these units side by side to see how they compare. And again, that's where we would say, give us a call and we're glad to, to help, you know, help you sort this out, which ones are going to work best for you. So again, I just want to go over that real quick and say, we've got a, in this short list of five optics, we have internal only rechargeable batteries, double A's, 18650s, CR123As, and internal removable batteries. So I don't know that there's any other combination of batteries out there on the market Mm -hmm. that you could come up with. And we've got them all in these scopes. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. So there are people that are listening to this or that may call in and they're excited because their spouse has given them a $3,000 budget to buy something with to hunt with this year. And they're all excited. And they call with a $3,000 budget and we're talking to them about night vision. So yeah. we, the reason being, again, there, there are really, like we said before, two optics are better than one. You know, you can get one $3,000 thermal scope, but then you're having to scan with your thermal scope on your rifle. And that's, that's fine, but that is a, that is a short term fix. I mean, most people right. that buy a thermal scope, They come back within a few months, if not sooner, if not maybe a little bit later. But at some point, they come back and say, I can't do this anymore. I've got to have a scan. I've got to have something to scan with. I can't scan with my thermal. So if you want a good setup 
from day one of coyote hunting season that you're going to be able to hunt with effectively through the year and you have a $3,000 budget, then yeah, night vision does need to be in the discussion. Uh, but also there are guys out there that for law regulations that maybe they can't mm-hmm. hunt with a the thermal. There are states that you still can't hunt with thermal at night, uh, but they can use night vision. So that might be one reason why a lot of people are calling in and, and getting a night vision scope. Or there are a lot of people out there, y'all, a lot of people that hunt in areas where there's a lot of, of homes. There's uh, some domestic dogs running around that they're concerned about. Uh, maybe they don't want to accidentally shoot a fox. You know, they want to shoot cows, but they don't want to shoot fox. Uh, and that night vision scope giving you a better, uh, more specific ID and capabilities. So uh, there, a lot of people will call and say, you know, I, I've got this budget and, you know, I want two optics. Do do people, you know, do they get a thermal and get a night vision scope? Like get a thermal scanner mm-hmm. and a night vision scope? And I, and I tell them all the time, yes, that is a very common combination of a night vision scope and a thermal scope. And it is an effective way to hunt. Now, what I will say and what needs to be said is that <clears throat> night vision is going to be ideal for if you hunt in areas that are very, very wide open. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't mm-hmm. want you to buy a night vision scope if you plan on hunting with woods. It's not going to work for you. Yeah. It's not going to be effective. And we need to talk about some alternative you know, scenarios and alternative uh, optics in, in that regard. But night vision is really going to be good for fresh cut fields, wide open spaces, not in places where there's obstruction in your views, like limbs, bushes, bushes, trees, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not going to be, it's not going to work out well for you. So that money could be better invested somewhere else. But uh, we are happy to bring you these shows. Sometimes Jason, I know it kind of feels like a mess because there's just so much information and it's just so much to go through. But this is the this is the um, uh, just an, a, a a timeline or not timeline of uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, just a it's an outline. outline. Of, there it's you go. A li- <laughs> it's a list of things to get get the the blood flowing, yeah. get you to start thinking about it. And, and you look at this because there's a lot of guys that say, "Man, I'd love to get into night hunting, but." I don't have five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. And in their mind, that's what it takes because they look around and they see all these four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar scopes, and they don't even realize that, hey, I mean, again, three thousand dollars, guys. We're not. We we understand that this is a lot of money, but it's like, well, wouldn't you mean I could possibly do it for that? I want to throw out one more quick thing, as I know we're wrapping the show. Also, we're not saying you've got to buy these two optics on day one, but what we're saying is you come in with a plan. You know, no different than, you know, whatever that is. Maybe you buy, uh, you know, a new truck or a side-by-side and you got all these things you want to do. You want to put a winch on it. You want to put a grill guard on it. But you don't do all of it day one, maybe. You're like, well, I can't really afford that. I'm going to get down the road. Same thing. But if you've got a plan, you come in here, buy your scope, and you're going, all right, I'm really looking over here at this, whatever, this sideline or this mm-hmm. axion or whatever. I'm, I'm, that's my plan. And I know I need to be saving for that. Right. And I know that if I can get saved up, whatever, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars, then I can I can get to that. Again, maybe not be today, may not be this season, might be next season. And you know what? That optic you're looking at might be discontinued by next year. But I guarantee you, mm-hmm. there's going to be something that's replaced it that's probably even better. Might even be cheaper. Who knows? So uh, again, I just wanted to make that point that mm-hmm. your Hans is right. This is an outline. It's a way to get you thinking. It's not. This is not, you know, McDonald's and just pick two off the dollar menu. No, we're, there there needs to be some some thinking about it and, and some uh, planning. Mm-hmm. But it's a way to to really help you, even if you're buying just one optic today. Yeah, I don't know why I couldn't think of the word outline. <laughs> well, you know, it's whatever, getting old, getting old. Yeah, it was kind of I don't know. It's just like my brain froze there for a second when I got put on the spot. But happens from time to time. Hey, I know we said it before, but outdoorlegacygear.com. Eight seven seven three five zero one eight one eight. You can talk to me, uh, Jason. They're going to think that Ashley's first name is other salesman because <laughs> that's that's how we refer to <laughs> him. other that's or right. other salesman Ashley. His other name's Ashley. Ashley. So you can talk to me. Uh, we're going to quit saying other salesman. We're going to just say me, Jason, He's and Ashley. Ashley. Uh, He's you been can, here long enough. Yeah. The other you can call and talk to us, uh, and uh, we'll be glad to help you. Uh, as always, outdoorlegacygear.com. If you want to find. 
more episodes of the Late Night Vision Show. I know we've done reviews, Jason. On I'm looking at it, probably every single one of the. I know we've done it on every single one of these optics. No, but we have no, no the, question. Yeah, the Late Night Vision Show dot com has a list of all of our past episodes. If you want to go quickly to the scope that you're looking for, you can always do a Google search. You can get on YouTube, search the the Late Night Vision Show and the optic that you're looking for. Uh, you can find Jason uh, over on YouTube, Outdoor Legacy, uh, on that YouTube channel. Uh, you just put out a video, Jason, of the brand new XL50, the Pulsar Thermion 2 XL50 LRF, which is a brand new scope uh, that was released last week. Uh, you did a short video there. I did a review on my YouTube channel. I know Ashley did one on his as well. So there's a lot of con- content being put out right now about new stuff. Uh, Jason's also on Facebook and, and on Instagram, Outdoor Legacy. Uh, you can find Ashley on YouTube at Row ETX. That's R O W E ETX. Again, he's putting out a ton of videos, y'all. Go check him out there. And on Instagram, Facebook, you find me, as always, on uh, YouTube, Hans ETX, and uh, Instagram and Facebook. I just put out my XL50 video last week, and on on uh, on Sunday of last week, I put out. Um, my video about the sidewinders so you can see the differences in all the sidewinders and see some video footage and which one might be right for you and it's kind of an appropriate show because we talked about two of them today so uh yeah thanks y'all thank y'all for joining us guys let me tell you what he just told you right there he just told you that between the the outdoor legacy family of Outdoor Legacy, the Hunzi's Texas YouTube channel, the the Row ETX YouTube channel, the uh, Late Night Vision Show, the Outdoor Legacy, all these channels, we're putting out an extreme amount of mm-hmm. content. It's a lot of work. These guys are busting their rear ends to get it done, to go out, uh, all of us testing these scopes, using these scopes, gathering video, mm-hmm. reviewing them. Uh, and so we want you to know that that if you're looking for for content if you're looking for reviews if you're looking for what does this scope look like mm-hmm. we're the place i mean again we've got a lot of fingers going out in all these different channels but right. uh, this is what we do for a living but it's a passion for us we enjoy it and we would love to have your business when you are ready to make a purchase whether it's your first purchase or maybe it's your 50th. You, you've had every scope out there and you're ready to get another one. Uh, we'd love to talk to you and love to have your business. Guys, between now and next week, y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes.